Hello and welcome to Piano and Keyboard Artist, where we discuss the artists related to pianos, keyboards and synthesizers. And continuing with my Depeche Mode album review series, this is Violator Part 8. Welcome to the most in-depth Depeche Mode album review series ever conducted by an independent YouTuber. This series leaves no stone unturned. We go into intricate detail covering all Depeche Mode's albums. Starting off with Speak and Spell, we will work our way through to the latest album Spirit and we cover everything from the songs, the structure, with interviews with the original producers, including the photographer Brian Griffin, uh, engineers, mastering engineers, and a whole lot more. So if you're a Depeche Mode fan, this is definitely the channel to be, so please subscribe. <laughs> Reach out and touch faith. What a track. I mean, in fact, what an album. I always hail this as sonic perfection. Yeah, I know technically and critically speaking there's no such thing as perfection, but uh, this is the album by which all other electronic albums are measured. And you know my feelings on this record, and this record has a very special place in my heart. But he has a very unpopular opinion, which may shock quite a few of you. Um, I've often said that when I listen to Violator, I never sort of listen to one track at a time. I always, this is one of the albums when I listen to it, I always try to listen to the whole thing. I never have it on in the background. When I'm listening to this record, I'm fully engaged, usually with a glass of red wine or something. And I like to listen to it very loudly on vinyl with my glass of red wine from beginning to end. But, if I'm listening to it on CD or digitally, which is not often, I find that Personal Jesus is the track that I tend to skip the most. Oh my God, did he just say that? Yes. Now, once again, when I listen to this album, I usually listen to it from beginning to end because it, it, it's a journey. And this is what I love about ownership of physical products is it's a journey. Um, as an artist, when you produce a body of work, it is a journey. and when artists produce vinyls, CDs or you know albums, there is a lot of intention and detail put into the you know the, the track listing because you know you don't just come up with 10 songs and just throw them on. And this I always hail as a classic example of how how the journey is just brilliant the way it starts. Let me take you on a trip around the world and back and ends off in clean. You know, it ends off with clean. So without getting off topic when I listen to this, I tend to listen to the whole album. But I have found for some reason that when I do, or if I do, skip a track, Personal Jesus, for some reason, is the track that gets skipped the most. Now, I don't know why that is, and, you know, let me think about that, because knowing you guys, you're going to probably want a reason for that, but um, I don't dislike Personal Jesus. I, it's certainly not a bad track, but for some reason, it's just the track that I tend to skip the most, and um, I don't know the reason for that. Um, I will also go on to say that Personal Jesus, to me personally, is a song that if Depeche Mode were to exclude it from their live set, it wouldn't bother me at all. You know what I mean? Um, and that's a bit sacrilege, I suppose, to some. But Personal Jesus to Depeche Mode, it's a, it's a little bit like, excuse the reference, it's a little bit like brown sugar or satisfaction to the to the Rolling Stones. I mean, if the Rolling Stones went up and didn't play those songs, you know, they'd be held to play. They have to play those songs. Um, and of course, hey man, Personal Jesus was one of Depeche Mode's biggest hits ever, so they have to play it and it's expected. All I'm saying is, if Depeche Mode didn't play it and they decided to play something more obscure like Here Is The House, I, I'd probably be happier. Anyway, there's just a little bit of useless information for you there. But let's look at Personal Jesus. So it was released on the 29th of August, 1989. God, that was about 100 years ago. 
Um, and this was, I believe, the biggest selling single in Warner Brothers history. The biggest selling 7-inch, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it did very, very well. Now, if you watch documentaries on Depeche Mode, they said that before this was released, they're a very cynical band. They always think things aren't going to do well, it's not going to chart. But much to their surprise, when it went out, it did become the top selling Warner Brothers single in Warner Brothers history. Seven, the seven inch or the 12 inch. But it charted and it did everything. Now, this record, when it came out, it, and, and this was, back, back in those days, I wasn't a Depeche Mode fan. I only got into to Depeche Mode later and then, you know, visited the back catalogue. But if I speak to the older fans and the sort of hardcore ones that they were there from the beginning, um, a lot of them had mixed feelings of when they first heard Personal Jesus. Most fans agree that Black Celebration was a favourite, and a lot of fans were annoyed when they heard uh, Music for the Masses because of the amount of guitars on it. But then, of course, it brought another fan base on board. So a completely separate subject. But fast forward to Violator. Remember, I've always said, and I repeat myself a lot on this channel, but Depeche Mode never, ever played it safely. If you look at every record they did, the approach was always different. They, weren't, they wouldn't get safe. Violator is the electronic record by which all other records are measured by. Um, and of course, in art, we, you know, it's not a competition, but as a producer myself and other producers I know, and, and the producers I've spoken to who have worked on this record, they all have a marvelous respect for this record because it is a record unlike any other. Now, I've often said that Depeche Mode, once they released Violator, they had the whole world just looking at them going, wow. And then I personally feel that Depeche Mode did not exploit the Violator sound enough. Don't get me wrong, I love Songs of Faith and Devotion, and I can't wait till we get to that series. But I think there would have been a lot of mileage in them doing, I don't want to say Violator 2, but indeed a record that was sonically similar to Violator. But then again, I come back to my theory on this band. What made them so successful and so radical was the fact that the Pash Mode never played it safely. Let's go back to Black Celebration. Black Celebration, Martin played the demos, and Daniel Miller said, hey man, no one's going to listen to this, this is downbeat, and Martin got upset. Daniel Miller allowed them to release Black Celebration. Once again, I've said on many videos, if Depeche Mode was signed to a major label, they would have been dropped long ago. But Daniel Miller gave them the artistic freedom and flexibility to follow them, you know, to follow their desires. And this is why Mute is such an amazing record label, and we'll get into that later. Let's fast forward all that, Depeche Mode, get to Violator. They've released this masterpiece, which is, you know, groundbreaking in every way. And then they get to Songs of Faith and Devotion. They go, okay, we're going to just change the approach. And that was a very dangerous thing to do. Okay, I'm saying this all for context, because that is indeed what happened from Black Celebration through to Music for the Masses. And then people, whether they liked Music for the Masses or not, Music for the Masses did do very well. So people kind of warmed to that sound. And then all of a sudden Violator comes. It's a lot more minimalistic sound. Uh, it's a definitely very craft work influenced in its... In its um, vibe and, uh, you know, the fact that it has minimal parts and things like that, but also a real sort of emphasis on guitars. And we give full credit to Flood, the producer, Mark Ellis, who basically said in the, you know, the preliminary uh, production meeting with them, when he heard their ideas of, you know, you never use the same sound twice, you know, you don't use guitars. Flood basically said, well, you know, with respect, your preconceived ideas are crap. You know, we can't discredit guitars. You know, guitars are one of the most expressive musical instruments known to mankind. So I'm a huge guitar fan. So it made sense incorporating the guitar in. And hence the reason when Personal Jesus came out, people went, 
oh my god, this is Depeche Mode, but as we've never heard them before. And then, once again, as we always see, the typical hardcore Depeche Mode fans went, Oh, wait, man, we're not having this. Ki yes, ki keyboards, yeah. Up yours to guitars, you know, we, we want keyboards. Yeah, yeah, but with that, it brought new fans on board. This track is incredibly radical. Just its feel. Um, it's quite monotonous with a bam 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 bam. It's got that um, monotonousness, if there is such a word, where it's kind of bam 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 bam. Very simple, but a, a real sort of earworm. It kind of gets into your psyche and under your sting, your skin. And then just as it's starting to get a little bit monotonous, the chords change, and we will deconstruct it now on the piano later on in this video. This track, Personal Jesus, did indeed announce itself as. Here's Depeche Mode, we're back, but here we are in a way that you've never heard us before. And that is hence the reason why some of the hardcore fans were very um, sort of not ready for it. And it brought other people on board who were sort of anti-Depeche Mode. So Depeche Mode had now gotten to the point in their career where they, you know, no one was laughing at them anymore. You know, we're not a teeny bop band, we are serious. And Violator is the top selling Depeche Mode album. I believe it sold over six million copies. Well, it's probably more by now. But I heard it sold over six million copies in a documentary about 15, 16 years ago. So it's probably a lot more. But this is their most popular record to date. And indeed, Personal Jesus is probably one of their biggest selling singles. Hence the reason why it's obviously played at every single show. Uh, it's usually, you know, just at the beginning of the encore or it's the final song but it, it, it's usually one of these showstoppers it's a great song um but for some reason i always end up more than often i end up skipping it on the album but anyway um just a little bit more information on this record um the the music video i remember was very very uh, you know hey man if you've been on the depeche mode journey with me you will you can probably remember where you were, you know, the first time you, you saw this video and heard it. But the video was, was awesome and it was filmed in that very grainy, is it called Super 8? Um, you know, very, it was meant to look very grainy. And I remember watching it as a, when, when I was younger and thinking, oh my God, this looks really cheap. Of course, at the time, I didn't understand that that was the, you know, that was the vibe they were going for. I absolutely get it now. Um, and I think also when I was younger, I could never understand why Depeche Mode's music videos always looked so low budget. Um, but of course, I absolutely get it now. Um, the video was great. It was filmed in a, an old Spanish town um, actually get my details here. It was filmed in the Tab Tabernas Desert of Elmira in Spain. So it was filmed in like a ranch and um, it's basically suggested in this that it, it's a brothel. Um, Martin, you kinky bastard. And of course at the time when I saw it I didn't really you know catch what was going on. I was too young but or naive. But of course you look at it now and you can see all the you know the 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 innuendos and the Im ambiguity and and uh, just something that really made me laugh uh, in my channel here I received a comment a few months ago uh, from one of my subscribers who said that the ladies in the personal Jesus uh, video one of them is was his is his grandmother and when I heard that that kind of blew my mind because I was thinking oh my god <laughs> You know, you look at that video and you look at these ladies to think that they are now grandmothers now. So, um, but then again, in Southeast London, where I live, some women are grandmothers from the age of 25. But that's another story. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Yeah, love the music video. And of course, there's that uh, sort of behind the scenes story where you see Fletch on a rocking horse. And I think the band did take the piss out of Fletch a lot. I think Fletch did often... He was often the butt end of jokes uh, in the band. And when they said to Fletcher, yeah, uh, you know, today is an important day. You're going to be uh, riding this big horse. He's a friendly horse, but he's very big. And as Fletch said, it really, really scared me. And when they got to the set, it wasn't a horse. It was a rocking horse. <laughs> and as Fletch said, yeah, it really did upset my day. Fletcher! Ah, <laughs> oh, we love you, Fletch. The clapping hands clap all they can. Everything counts in large amount. <laughs> oh, I've missed this Depeche Mode album review series, haven't you? But anyway, 
Right, so that is, I mean, there is a lot more detail we can go into. I just wanted to give you some of my thoughts and insight. And now I'm going to break down the structure of the song. We all know that Martin Gore's got a very soft spot in his heart for country music. And if you listen to country music, even if you're not a country music fan, of course, rock and roll has a lot of its roots in blues and country. And Martin Gore does have very, very eclectic taste. In fact, if you listen to the demo of Enjoy the Silence, you can hear this kind of country and western vibe coming through in that but that's another story um that country and western sort of feel really comes through strongly in personal jesus as well and that is why just just the vibe and that riff and it even if you didn't see a video to it it sounds hot and sweaty you know it sounds like a desert and that is why anton Corbyn in his brilliance was very good at marrying the visuals to the sound and that is why I think that music video to Personal Jesus goes so perfectly because you can just feel the heat in it and, and indeed when you hear the record it just sounds really hot and dun, 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 dun. visually and musically that video go perfectly together. So looking at the structure of Personal Jesus um, the riff is very very simple. It's almost to the point of where it's a little bit monotonous. But just as it's starting to get monotonous, you get the, the chord changes. And it's got really, really good chord changes. I really, really do like it. And once again, in this channel, I like to always strip things down to the piano because then that helps you to just focus on the fundamental structure and the chords and the melody without being distracted by all the glorious synthesizer sounds. But let's look at the structure. It's just starting off with a... Now, remember when this song is played live, Martin is on the guitar. Back in the day, Alan Wilder would be playing the drums. These days, you've got Eigner on the drums, drums and Gordino. So, um, but let's look back at the sort of classical Depeche Mode period because these are the sounds I have from that period. Um, you'd have Martin on guitar, Dave singing obviously, Alan Wilder on the drums and of course you'd have Fletch manning the keyboards by himself. So what I have here is Fletch's keyboard bank. So let's run through the keyboard chromatically and see what sounds are on Mr. Fletcher's keyboard here. Starting off with the bottom C note. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's a preacher. Now do yourself a favor and in the description below I want you to watch the video I did where I interviewed Pino Pescatola. Amico. Ciao. Grazie. He was one of the best interviews I've had. It, it, that interview resonated so well with the community and Pino Pescatola was one of the engineers on the production of Violator and in fact do yourself a favor and watch that video because I was amazed by his recollection, his recall and how he remembered such intricate details. Um, Pino, I love you man and we're coming back for a second interview. Pino goes on to say that I believe Francois Kevorkian when he was doing one of the remixes, one of the extended versions for Personal Jesus, he was looking for um, samples of a preacher, things like the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I'm not crazy anymore. You know, you know, real sort of like uh, evangelist preacher type stuff. And remember, this was 1989. And, you know, this wasn't like today where you can just go online and you can download a sample. Or... So apparently, and you will get the details if you watch that video, Francois had to get on the phone to a friend of his in New York, I believe. And this friend had a cassette with uh, with some preacher on it and he he had to actually post the cassette so they had to wait you know four or five days for that cassette to get there and then they took those samples from the cassette and these are the samples you um you hear these samples go and watch the Pesh mode live in the any of the youtube videos and you will hear this the lord jesus christ himself usually at the end when martin's doing his kind of um solo and you've got that uh, sort of instrumental that heavy electronic part and then you'll see Fletch go the Lord Jesus Christ himself so Fletch's parts on this are very simple he just has to the Lord Jesus Christ himself because the Bible's the truth I'm not crazy anymore tell me what you've learned about God personal Jesus personal Jesus personal Jesus 
Okay, so those are nothing there. But um, I mean, the, the, these are not important parts. I mean, what, what I mean by that is these parts. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself are not as important as. They're not as important as that part. So, so, so this is what I call. Those are what I obviously call signature parts, but this is just what I call a bit of spice and flavor. And, and listen to the live performances if you can hear these samples. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Next one. Because the Bible's the truth. The next one. I'm not crazy anymore. Tell me what you've learned about God's love. Listen to me. Personal. Jesus. Personal. Jesus. Personal. Jesus. I've never heard that one, but it's great. Personal. Jesus. Okay, then over here, remember these are Fletcher's sound banks. There's nothing here, these... This just chromatic, we're just going chromatically up the keyboard. Oh, here we go. So here's the... So, w once again, I don't know why we've got those notes in there, because we only need this one and that one. So, that's how it starts. Reach out, touch faith. Um, let's have a look at some of the other parts. Nothing there. That's nothing. Oh, there we go. There's that part. And nothing there. So really, fundamentally, all Fletch has to do on this on this track is start it off by going. And then, and then the, you've got that reverse sound. I believe that would be on the dra on the backing track. Reach out, touch faith. Your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear our prayers. Someone who cares. And really good, typical Martin Gore chord progressions. Remember, I've coined the phrase agorism. And agorism is, once again, Martin always introduces a chord in his sequence of melodies uh, where something just hits you from the left field. And that is, if you've been watching my channel, you will know what I mean. But there are gorisms in this as well. So the song starts off with the chorus. It's your own personal Jesus, someone to hear your prayers, someone who cares. Guys, if I get the words wrong, just go easy on me, please. It's hard to concentrate and play at the same time. Your own personal Jesus Someone to hear your prayers Someone who cares Yep, we know it. Um, so it is fundamentally quite monotonous. Not in a bad way, but it's I wouldn't say, monotonous is probably not the word, it's a little bit, I would say, trance-like, you know, like in, if you get trance music and there's no comparison here, is where something is repeated very often, almost like a mantra, that, you know, that's how you get into a hypnotic state, is when something is repeated. And it does have this kind of hypnotic, kind of repeating quality, and just as it's starting to get a little bit monotonous, uh, the chords change. So it's... Feeling unknown and you're all alone Flesh and bone by the telephone Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer Take second best, put me to the test Things in your chest you need to confess I will deliver, you know, I'm a forgiver That's exactly the same part And all Fletch is doing throughout, the com throughout this um, track is obviously following the song and having to go reach out touch faith and of course when we get to the reach out touch faith so once again simple parts that Fletch plays but I've often said when parts are simple that's when you got to concentrate because those parts are so iconic if he doesn't play them on cue you will notice Right, so I'll just sketch out the shell chords here quickly. Shell chords meaning just the um, the the um, the basic structure, and that's and 
wind blown by the telephone Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer Take second best, put me to the test Things on your chest, you need to confess I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver And yeah, yeah, we get the Reach out, touch faith And here's a classic gorism When we get to this part here Reach out, touch faith because it's reach out, touch faith, and the chords are going. Can you hear? That clashes. It's a gorism. Remember, it's that's that's not in the, a gorism is a a phrase that we've come up with. So, it's not in the music textbook of musicology. <laughs> You see, so once again, it gets quite hypnotic just on that bam, 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 just on the C sharp, on the F sharp, but then it breaks down to it, it or it resolves, so it goes. A feeling unknown, and you're all alone, flesh and bone by the telephone. Lift up the receiver, I'll make you a believer. Take second best, put me to the test Things on your chest, you need to confess I will deliver, you know I'm a forgiver There we go Reach out, touch faith Come on Fletch Reach out, touch faith So as you see, you know, it, this can be played on a piano, anything can be played on a piano, but this is really a, I don't want to say it's not a piano friendly song, it's just, dum -dum. Um, you will see when I get to the next part, which is Halo, how beautifully melodically that's, you know, how, how beautifully melodically that sounds on a piano. But, hey man, personal Jesus, what can we say? Um, it is definitely a masterpiece as far as, if you listen to the, is it the hands and feet mix? <laughs> Listen to that stomping. Dun, 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 the stomping on that is amazing. Once again, check out that interview I did with Pino Pescatola, where he talks about how that stomping, how how that was recorded at so many different microphone angles. They recorded it was it was stomping on flight cases, like dum 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 dum. They would on on flight cases, and then they would stomp on them with their feet, and then they would put those flight cases at the bottom of a stairwell with microphones at the top of the stairwell and they would play that doom, 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 on those flight cases so that is stomping on flight cases and recorded from different uh, uh, angles different distances different mic distances once again paying homage to the sort of gareth jones acoustic spaces you know uh, recording recording things and remember that very often um it is not only the sound, but it is, it is the space in between the sounds, and it, it is the air, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, it's almost like in art, when you have a painting, it, 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 it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the spaces in between the colors and things, and that's exactly the same with music production, and hey man, I'm gonna get carried away, yeah, but the recording of the the stomp box, you know, the 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 the, the, the stomping on the flight cases that they stomp. Um, it's amazing. Watch that video. It's just mind blowing. And while you're at that, also check out part four in this series where we talk all about the B sides, and I go into uh, songs like Dangerous and all the B sides from 
uh, Violator because Violator did spawn some fantastic B-sides. And while we're on that, um, look in the link in the description below and you will see the complete playlist of all the episodes I've done in my Depeche Mode album review series. They are all there for you to see. Um, now, once we come to the end of this, that's not to say we won't go back to some of the songs and go into more detail because you will notice that the, the, the current episodes are a lot more detailed than you know the, the, the early episodes when I started back in um, Speak and Spell. And that's obviously because I'm becoming better at what I do and learning more about what you guys want. And hey man, it's a blast. So let's just cap it right there. I'm really enjoying talking about Depeche Mode again. I know we've taken a little bit of a break because I just wanted you guys to catch up with some of the older content. So now it's up to you, my friends. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Personal Jesus? Is it also a song that you tend to skip a lot when you're listening to it or not? You know, um, where does the song sit on the Violator record? Is it one of your favorites? Is it one of your least favorites? Or do you not have a favorite? Some people say it's impossible to choose a favorite on Violator because once again, you know, as I say, I don't listen to Violator in songs i always listen to it as a complete whole body of work my friends i appreciate your support hit that subscribe button there is also a vaughn george facebook group which you can join if you want to get some in-depth discussion regarding the videos on this content thank you so much for all your support lots of love and i will see you on the next part of the depeche mode album review series be safe adios